Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Marinick. I'm the CAO, uh, Secretary Treasurer, Tonnaby Region Conservation Authority. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, before we got started here, we had close to 80 uh, registrants tonight. There are two, two groups of registrants. There are those who are going to be participating. Uh, they include the board members, uh, recipients of our awards this evening, obviously our guest speaker, and, uh, and um, those folks, you'll see their faces come on and off and uh, you'll hear them come on and off. Other participants or others that are joining us are here as, uh, as observers. Um, uh, they won't have, you won't have the function of uh, turning on uh, being seen or to be able to speak, but you can uh, join us through the chat room and you can join us through the uh, Q&A function. Uh, both the chat room and the Q&A function be monitored and any questions that, that are brought forward, especially after David Crombie speaks, uh, will be raised with David and he'll, he said he'd be pleased to take a few questions at the conclusion of his speech. So um, that's uh, the general arrangement for, for this evening. And uh, to those who are participants whose who's, who's, uh, image will appear and disappear, you'll be prompted to turn things on or off uh, through the course of the evening. Um, so that's, uh, that's the introductory comments for today. Again, thanks very much for taking the time. We're sorry we, get, we got a bit late here started. We had a, a few technology glitches, but I think we've overcome those and uh, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna turn it over to uh, the chair of the board of directors, Andy Mitchell, to uh, start this evening's uh, business side of the meeting. Andy. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. I appreciate uh, uh, you getting this underway. And thanks to everybody who's uh, put this all together tonight. Technology can be challenging in a time of COVID. So I appreciate everybody's patience uh, for doing this. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to ask the board members to uh, turn on their cameras uh, so that uh, we can see the board members. Uh, there's Earl and Kim and Michael and Ryan and Sherry, and Diane, Joe. Well, we're all here. And thank you, uh, thank you for all uh, turning on your cameras. I want to begin uh, call the meeting to order and begin uh, by uh, saying that we respectfully acknowledge that we are on the treaty and traditional territory of the Mississauga Ashinaabe. We offer our gratitude to First Peoples for their care for and teachings about our earth and our relations. May we honor those teachings. I'd like to uh, echo Dan's uh, comments uh, for our audience. Uh, as he mentioned, we have 80 people plus the board here tonight, plus some of our staff, which we very much appreciate. And I want to thank everybody for coming out. There's a number of, of, of uh, distinguished uh, uh, people there, including some elected politicians, and uh, thank them as, as, as well. But I got to tell you how much we appreciate having so many of you come out uh, to our AGM. So, uh, so thank you very, very much. I'd ask any of the board members if they have a... Uh, a conflict of interest that they would like to disclose. Not seeing any, uh, please record that in the minutes. I am going to ask for a mover and a seconder to approve tonight's agenda. So Diane has moved and Carl has seconded. All those in favor, please raise your hands. That is carried. Uh, I will now ask uh, the <laughs> Secretary of the Treasurer otherwise known as Dan, uh, to do the roll call. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to uh, go over the members of the board um, alphabetically, um, representing City of Peterborough, Councillor Gary Baldwin. Is Gary able to get on? I don't believe he's been able to log on. Okay, so not yet. Uh, Councillor Ryan Hundley from the city, uh, Township of Kevin Monaghan. Present. Present, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Michael Matt Metcalf from the Municipality of Trent Hills. Present. Present. Uh, Mayor Andy Mitchell from Township of Selwyn. Present. Deputy Mayor Carl Moher from the Township of Duro Dummer. Present. Carl, thank you. Councillor Tr Tracy Richardson from the City of Cortha Lakes. Tracy, thank you. Deputy Mayor Sherry Senes from the Township of Selwyn. Present. Thank you. Mayor Joe Taylor from the Township of Tonneby South Monaghan. Here. Thank you. Mayor Diane Terrian, City of Peterborough. Present. Councillor Kim Zippel, City of Peterborough. Present. Present. And Councillor Paula War from the Township of Aspidel Noro, 
Norwood has sent her regrets. So Mr. Chair, you have quorum. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. Uh, colleagues, we'll uh, move on to our first report uh, that was circulated to uh, board members. That's the amendments to the election procedure for officers. As uh, colleagues will recall, because of the electronic uh, nature of this AGM, we've had to make uh, a couple of uh, small adjustments to how we do the election. And so it's important that we deal with this report before we actually have our election. So that was circulated in uh, board uh, uh, 114, 2021, which you've all received. I'm gonna read the motion that's attached to the board, and then I'll look for a mover and a seconder before I put the question. So from that report, the uh, motion is, whereas the provincial government has imposed a lockdown in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas the provincial lockdown prohibits the authority from holding its annual general meeting in person, and, whereas the authority has decided to proceed with its annual general meeting electronically and whereas the authority's election procedures for officers as written, as written cannot be applied when meetings are held electronically and whereas the nominating committee in preparing the proposed slate of officers contacted each member of the board to ascertain their interest in the position of chair and vice chair. Therefore, be it resolved that the governance bylaws be amended to remove the requirement to apply the election procedures for officers for the 2021 appointments of the chair and vice chair positions. And that was outlined, the rationale was in the report. So I need a mover and a seconder of that. Sherry has moved that. And Tracy, I think, has seconded. Uh, and all those, any further discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor? That is carried. So uh, that is uh, changes our rules. And the second report, which is uh, one uh, two fourteen twenty one, uh, provides uh, uh, the authority of the board or the direction of the board to the secretary treasurer to carry out the election. So I will do the same procedure. We'll read the uh, what we are going to uh, look for uh, a mover and a seconder on. Resolved that report number 2021-002 titled appointment of chair and vice chair be received and resolved that the CAO secretary treasurer be directed to conduct the proceedings for the appointment of a chair and vice chair for 2021 and resolved that the staff be directed and authorized to do all things necessary to give effect to these resolutions. I need a mover and a seconder to that. I see Joe and I see Kim. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hands. That is carried. Uh, in accordance with the uh, board resolution, I will turn the meeting over uh, to the uh, secretary treasurer and please proceed. Thank you, Andy. So at this time, I, I'm going to declare all officer and board uh, positions vacant. And I'm going to call on uh, Director Joe Taylor to present the nomination of the nominating committee for the position of chair. Joe, would you tell us what the nomination committee advises? Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, it is a recommendation of the nominating committee that Andy Mitchell be appointed a chair for the year 2021. Okay, thank you. Andy, will you accept that nomination? I will. Thank you. Then the, the motion is simple, folks. Uh, be it resolved that Andy Mitchell, representative of the Township of Salem, be appointed as the chair of the Tonneby Region Conservation Authority for 2021. Joe, could you move that as the chair of the nominating committee? Thank you. And a seconder, please. Tracy, um, you were on the nomination committee. I think I need somebody that was not on the nomination committee. Is that correct? So that's Carl. Um, uh, all those in favor? Opposed, if any. Motion carried. Andy, congratulations. Uh, did you care to say a few words at this time? No, I, I'll make some closing comments when, at the conclusion of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll move now to the election of vice chair. And again, Joe, I'll ask if you could uh, present the nomination from the nominating committee, please. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, it is a recommend recommendation of the nominating committee that Ryan Huntley be appointed vice chair for the year 2021. Thank you. Ryan, would you accept that nomination? I accept the nomination. Thank you. 
So the motion is that Ryan Huntley, representative of the Township of Cavan and Monaghan, uh, be appointed as vice chair of the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority for 2021. Joe would move that, please. And uh, a seconder. Diane, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Motion carried. Thank you. Congratulations. Andrew, if I could just make a quick point of order. Um, Councillor Baldwin has let me know that he is called in. I don't know okay. that he'll be able to, to speak, but he's part, he's listening. Okay, thank you. In favor of both of these motions. Thanks very much. Um, I see a phone, a phone number in the bottom right of the screen there. So it must be him. Uh, Ryan, did you care to say anything at this time? Uh, thank you, Chair, I, or Dan, through the Chair. I would just like to say, you know, thank you to Sherry Sinas for all of the uh, years she's been Vice Chair, and I got big shoes to feel, fill, so I look forward to the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. So now we're going to move to the annual resolutions. The annual, our bylaws um, require us to make a number of appointments and pass a number of resolutions an annually, and... Um, We'll go through these rather quickly, but the first one is to appoint an audit committee for the year 2021. And again, I'll call on uh, Director Joe Taylor to uh, present the recommendation of the nominating, nominating committee for the audit committee for 2021. Joe. Uh, thank you again, Dan. It is the recommendation of the nominating committee that the audit committee for 2021 be comprised of Kim Zippel, Ryan Huntley and Joe Taylor. Thank you. And uh, can I just ask if uh, uh, Kim, Ryan, and Joe accept that nomination? Accepted. Yes. I do. Okay. Thanks very much. So the motion then is that the board members, uh, the board members Joe Taylor, Ryan Huntley, and Kim Zipp will be appointed to the audit committee for the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority for 2021. Um, Gonna have to get somebody other than Joe to move that. Carl will move that. Somebody else to second, please. Mike will second that. Uh, all in favor? I think Gary nodded yes as well. Opposed, if any? Motion carried. Thank you. Congratulations to you three. Uh, now we'll move to the appointment of representatives to Cons Conservation Ontario Council. Um, uh, as our standard practice is that uh, we, uh, that the chair represent Autonomy Region Conservation Authority on Conservation Ontario Council and the vice chair is the first alternate and the uh, CAO secretary is the second alternate. So formally read the resolution now. It is that uh, resolved that the chair represent Autonomy Region Conservation Authority on the Conservation Ontario Council for 2021 and resolve that the vice chair be the alternate representative for the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority on the Conservation Ontario Council for 2021 and resolve that the CEO sec CAO Secretary Treasurer be the second alternative representative for the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority on the Conservation Ontario Council for 2021. If someone would, would move that and second that, please. I have a mover, that would be Diane, a seconder, please. Kim. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, opposed, thank you, Gary. Opposed, if any? Motion carried. Uh, the next uh, annual appointment is for the head from the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. And the motion is that the duties and responsibilities of the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority with regard to the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Individual Privacy Act have be assigned to Denise Landry, the Manager of Corporate Services. Uh, if I could have somebody move that, please. That'd be Ryan seconded by Sherry. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Aye. Motion carried, thank you. The next is the appointment of our auditor, solicitor, and banker, and we'll just do those three together. Um, and our practice is uh, subject to um, um, acceptable performance in the previous year. We routinely uh, reappoint in the subsequent years. All three, lawyer, solicitor, and banker, um, have provided good service in the past year. 
So the motion is that the firm of Garland Hickey Chartered Professional Accounts be appointed as the auditor for 2021 and that the firm LLF lawyers be appointed as solicitor for 2021 and that the Canadian Bureau Bank of Commerce be appointed as banker for 2021. Someone would move that and second that, please. That would be Kim, seconded by Diane. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried, thank you. The next resolution is a borrowing resolution, a borrowing resolution, that a borrowing bylaw in accordance with section three sub five of the Conservation Authorities Act be adopted to a limit of a million dollars for the year of 2021. And that's the, the amount we've had for the last number of years now. So if I could have somebody move that and then second that, please. Carl moving that. Ryan is seconding that. All in favor? Aye. Um, none opposed, motion is carried. And the final resolution for this point portion of the meeting is the enabling resolution that staff be authorized and directed to, do, to directed to do all things necessary to give effect to these resolutions. Someone could move that, please. Uh, Sherry seconded by Michael. <clears throat> Excuse me, Sherry, Michael, all in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm now going to return the chair's function to Chairman Andy Mitchell. And I'm going to disable my voice and video. Thank you, Dan. And I have asked all my colleagues if they could mute and turn off their cameras because we're going to move into the guest speaker portion of our meeting. So I have the great honor and pleasure of introducing our guest speaker for this evening, uh, Mr. David Crombie. Uh, I, uh, Mr. Crombie has a long history of public service and engagement. As mayor of Toronto from 1972 to 1978, he was instrumental in the city's urban reform movement and oversaw the creation of the St. Lawrence neighborhood, the development of affordable housing and the new downtown plan. As mayor of Toronto, Mr. Crombie ushered in a new era of socially responsible urban development inspired by thinkers such as Jane Jacobs. Much of his time as mayor was spent trying to rein in the development industry. He was the first mayor to represent the reform movement in Toronto politics, and his policy dif policies differed sharply from those, of the, of, from those who preceded him. David Crombie then served as a member of parliament from 1978 to 1988, during which time he held several cabinet positions. Throughout the years, Mr. Crombie served in various advisory capacities to Toronto City and provincial governments relating to urban issues, including a stint as CEO of the Canadian Urban Institute. In 2015, David Crombie was appointed as the chair of the Coordinated Land Use Planning Review Advisory Panel, coordinating a review of Ontario land use plans to manage growth, protect our agricultural lands and natural environment, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and support economic development in Ontario's greater, greater Golden Horseshoe and Greenbelt. Mr. Crombie is an officer of the Order of Canada and a member of the Order of Ontario. Recently, in response to changes made to the Conservation Authorities Act, David Crombie resigned as the chair of the Ontario Greenbelt Council, whose mandate it is to provide advice to the Minister on land use planning matters related to the Greenbelt. Please join me in welcoming David Crombie, who will speak today about how changes to the Conservation Authorities Act may impact our environmental future and how conservation authorities may have to pivot to protect Ontario's watersheds. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Crombie. Thank you very much, Andy, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Andy, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, and I might say I want to thank all of you for participating in one of the great democratic rituals that I remember so well. So thank you. I, I am here tonight at the invitation to talk about, at an invitation to talk about the future of, uh, of conservation authorities in Ontario. Um, their, 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 their useful future lies in my judgment in the balance. Um, when the province first of all launched uh, Bill 229, which was a direct attack uh, on the role and mandate of the conser conservation authorities, um, most people were shocked. Just as shocking in many ways was the kind of, let me call it the lamentable 
misunderstanding of watershed planning uh, by the province and how it works. And just as shocking, a kind of sorry ignorance of the historic contribution of conservation authorities to the health, safety, growth, and prosperity of this province and its people. So let me, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll start with a very short, but I hope useful historic context in what we're talking about. Conservation authorities in Ontario are unique in North America. Many jurisdiction, jurisdictions I've been at around North America wish they had one. They were born, Conservation Authorities in Ontario, in 1946. It's their 75th anniversary. They, they were brought in, interesting enough, at the same time as the Planning Act of Ontario. That's because they believed that, that, that land use planning and environmental planning were simply two sides of the same coin. They also believed that the new co conservation authorities, which were gathered up from old conservation movements, that the new conservation authorities would be the stewards, would be the guardians of our, of our natural heritage. And finally, when they started, they believed that conservation authorities would be successful so long as they paid attention to three fundamentals. One, that they would continue to embrace as fulsome as they could the, the watershed, the principles of watershed planning. Secondly, that they would continue to be fueled by citizen participation. And, th and thirdly, uh, that they would have appropriate financial support from the province. In the early years, in the late 40s, 50s, 60s, um, there was, It was a time of, as you would all know, um, a massive growth uh, in, in urban expansion. So it was not an easy time uh, for conservation authorities. It was like, as they used to say, having to be a good cop uh, on a hard beat. And, and although there were some things like the 1954 uh, hurricane and floods and so on that showed the, the value of conservation authorities, it wasn't until really the latter decades of the 20th century and into the 21st century that big changes came. Big changes came in basically three forms following one another. The emergence of new ideas. Secondly, the participation in community activism. And thirdly, leading to government policies and new legislation. Very quickly, let me look at the new ideas. Interesting enough, the new ideas, and there were many, many of them, the new ideas were, were in a sense flowed from some old truths that were being rediscovered. And, they, and I can put it in a nutshell. The, 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 the old truths were that everything is connected to everything else. We are responsible for the consequences of our actions and therefore the idea that you can move in, use up, throw away, and move on was no longer supportable. And also, more importantly, perhaps, that the major issues of ecology and economy and community are not mutually exclusive, but indeed, they are mutually interdependent. Now, those ideas bubble right across the province as it did around a good part, certainly well, a good part of the world. And, and therefore, it led to much activity at the local level. Everywhere, people popped up to have something to say about the new ideas coming their way. And so we saw things like remedial action plans in local areas, areas of concern that need to be dealt with, um, the save the Oak Ridges Marine, uh, save the Ganaraska again, uh, all of those, all of those movements, and there are many, many right across the province, trying to give some kind of tangible evidence to the new ideas about them, and they worked very hard. And, and, and out of it came, thirdly, some legislation that is still with us and still commands our day. They, the, the, the Great Lake Water Quality Agreement agreements uh, in the 50s, 60s, 
All of those led to great changes in legislation dealing with the Great Lakes. In 1983, the Niagara Escarpment Commission was established. In 2002, the Oak Ridges Moraine Commission was established. 2005, the Green Plan. In 2006, the Growth Plan. And in 2015-16, the Integrated Plan Review, Planning for Health, Prosperity, and Growth, 2015 to 2041. Those still form the framework for land use and environmental planning in the province. Now, in all of those, the Conservation Authority, all those changes, all of those events, the Conservation Authorities played a major role at the center of it. They provided a day-to-day -day understanding of the reality on the ground for those who had ideas of what ought to happen. And at the same time, while well, the conservation authorities were forging new, new ways in which to give voice and give uh, practicality to the new ideas, they carried out the service that conservation authorities have always carried out watershed planning, uh, conservation, conservation, uh, conservation and regeneration of river valleys, flood control, water quality, stewardship of forests and woodlots, all of those things, including recreation and educational programs. Indeed, conservation authorities surely deserve the appreciation and respect of everybody in the province. But unfortunately, now they find themselves under the gun from the province of Ontario, the very, the very entity that should be there protecting them. We saw that when they brought in Bill 229 just before Christmas in a rush. Um, it was tucked into a money bill, so you didn't know there was an environmental matter coming your way. And it was passed into law just before Christmas. Again, in a nutshell, what that Bill 229 means is that it diminishes the role of the conservation authorities and undermines their ability to carry out their work as stewards of our natural heritage. That's why people are angry because diminishing the role of conservation authorities and undermining their ability to carry out their work as stewards that's, that's, I mean, it's unbelievable that people would think that that's a good idea. Following, or at the same time, roughly as two, Bill 229, we had Bill 197, which enhanced the role of what are now understood by most people as ministerial zoning orders. People didn't know much about ministerial zoning orders before. Why? Because they were very rarely used. Two, three, maybe four a year, one time six out of 30 years. But interesting enough, the conservation, the, 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 the provincial government has now used it almost 40 times in the last year. So what has happened, of course, is that these have become um, ways in which the power and responsibility of conservation authorities are, are assumed, there's, there's unilateral jurisdiction assumed by the province and, and, and takes over with overrule what conservation authorities can do. And they can do that with no plan, no public debate and no appeal. So that's why it's rarely used, but boy, has it become a powerful matter. In short, minister, ministerial zoning orders have become weaponized. They've been weaponized by this government in such a way that they are clearly authoritarian, dictatorial, and profoundly undemocratic. Now, the good news is that there's a broad coalition of people, organizations, and communities across the province that are getting angrier and organizing to fight back. Their program of action is focused on the following. They are looking to combat the implementation of the anti-environment parts of Bill 229. They see the need to strengthen, not weaken, the 
the role and functioning of our conservation authorities. Thirdly, they're insisting that there be citizen participation and open public discussion before decisions are made and not after. Fourthly, they want to halt the gross abuse of, of ministerial zoning orders and demand that there be an open public discussion of their use. Why, where, how, and when. And finally, they want to remind Queen's Park that the job that, that, that Queen's Park's job is to serve the interests of all of the people of the province and not just the interests of a favored few. So in conclusion, if I could, let me, let me say what I think you believe. We need conservation authorities back at full strength, back at full strength for future generations. And especially, if I might say, in the new post pandemic world that we're now entering. It's important to remember this in my final thought. Important to remember how we treat conservation authorities will tell us how we will treat the environment. If our conservation authorities are diminished, so are we. If they thrive and flourish, so will we. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you for you. your talk, uh, Mr. Crombie. There's been a number of questions that have come through on our Q&A board and that have, people have uh, provided us ahead of time. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna have time for all of the questions. I do have a few that we can go through. Um, and I also want to remind everyone um, that you can add them in the chat. If one has just come to your mind as, as uh, Mr. Crombie's been talking, you can add them to the chat or you can pop them in the Q&A function. Um, but one of the, the, the first ones that we had is, is thoughts on the future. Where, where do you see things going? No, I'm not a soothsayer. So I, it's hard for me to know. Uh, I, think, I think the government uh, does have the sense that they, they've not, even if they think they're right, they didn't do well. But I think they're wrong and I think they're beginning to discover that. So they're, they are making some moves. But but I don't I, I think they re require they require some some further instruction from the public. That's why you're seeing more and more meetings like the one tonight, wherever they happen to be. They, 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 they could be annual meetings or they could be any other kind of meetings. There are more and more people try to make sure they get in touch with the government caucus. They get in touch with all with the other two political parties that they create um, a democratic wave of interest in making sure that conservation authorities uh, and their role and function are maintained. So, so where's it going? It's still gonna be dependent on the public saying, we don't like what you're doing, please change. Excellent, thank you. Um, I have one um, more specific one. Um, and this question is, do you think that the changes to the CA role or CA powers will have cascading effects on other decision makers or agencies, land use policies, et cetera? No, I think they will have an effect. It may, it may not be what the government intended because I think people are beginning to now try and learn as much as they can about conservation authorities before they enjoyed conservation authorities and they took them for granted. When they can't take it for granted, they, and, and they use them perhaps only for recreation reasons or education reasons, but they begin to understand the vital functions that 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 conservation authorities play, then you're finding, I think, that that the cascading influence or the cascading impact is one which is going to, um, I think, bring news to the government that they need to change their way on this. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I think your answer um, actually addressed a, one of the, uh, a few of the other questions that we had. Um, this this is, is follows on um, what um, one of the previous questions or answers that you've been given is, how do members of the public and partners support the CAs going forward? Well, that is a, that's a, it's a good question because I, I, most of the public simply uh, if there's a program going on, we'll help donate, we'll, we'll pay their way in, 
and so on. Um, so they, they do try and participate. And I think they, they want to be asked how they can participate. Some of them are different, but they're, first of all, there's 36 of them across the province, and they all serve different communities. And those communities are not necessarily the same. They're not the same in downtown Toronto as they are in downtown Lindsay or, sorry, or the lakes. Um, so uh, they're, they're, uh, most of the, most of the act action for conservation authorities are local and, and, and we need to make sure that they've got all the information they can get. So that there are organizations, I'm involved with a number of them. Conservation Ontario does some really nice work on that. Uh, there are blue belt or uh, blue, uh, green belt organi organizations. There's SELA, uh, uh, this is Canadian Environmental Law Association, Environmental Defense. There are lots of organizations, both local and regional and provincial that are there. And in the new world of, of uh, Googling up, you can, you can find them. The thing to do is to get involved. We need to have more and politicians, I've been one for years, politicians live in a vote economy. And if they find that the public is not gonna be voting for them, unless there's some, some moral question involved, they will want to try and do what they can. And so, they, but if you don't hear from them, they don't hear from people, they don't know any better. Wonderful, thank you. And I have one last question for you, if you could take the time for that, that came from our Q&A. And that was one of um, our attendees was asking, is there any teeth left in the Bill of Rights around requests for review, in your opinion? In, in, the, in the Environmental Bill of Rights? Mm -hmm. I've had some conversations with civil liberties about that. It's a little unclear. Uh, and the reason it's a bit unclear is because it was not brought forward in a in a, an environmental bill, they snuck it into to a, to a, a budget bill, and that obscures the 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 the, the line I think for, for for lawyers. But on the other hand, people are still working on it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Crombie. Um, thank you, panelists, um, or sorry, our attendees and panelists for such great questions. And thank you again, um, Mr. Crombie, for such thorough and thoughtful answers. I'm going to turn the floor back over to Chair Andy Mitchell right now. Thank you, Jennifer, for, uh, for moderating the questions. Uh, David, thank you very much for, uh, for your presentation. Uh, you are a voice and a passionate voice, and one that is of great value as it booms across this province. And uh, you, uh, the, the passion that you have for the protection of, 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 of people, places, and our environment, it, it really comes through in what you say. And so Thanks, thank Andy. you for taking- I, I appreciate that. And congratulations to you uh, on your post again. Thank you very much. So in lieu of a speaking fee, a donation, uh, David has asked that a donation be made in uh, his name to Camp Forth is Forest School Program. Camp Forth is a leader in the delivery of outdoor and environmental education programs. And in response to the COVID-19 pandemic have launched a forest school. Uh, developed in Europe, forest schools are a model of education where most of the learning takes place outside. I know David, they'll very much appreciate uh, you directing uh, a donation to them. Oh, I know the program, it's a good one. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on with the, the rest of it. I know that you probably have other things to do, but again, thank you very, very much. And we really right. appreciate the time you took. Thank you. You keep well. Thank you. You too. Okay, colleagues uh, on board. Uh, we're next going to hear from our CAO, uh, or excuse me, yes, from, uh, from, uh, from our CAO, from Dan, who is going to provide a report on, on the past year. So Dan, I'll turn it over to you and I'll ask uh, that the board continue to keep their cameras off and their voices muted. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, I don't think I, ha I can overstate how different 2020 has been. Uh, you know, it included for everybody an extended shutdown period, followed by a phased in reopening. There were restrictions on gathering sizes, uh, prohibition on certain types of activities and, you know, other requirements that take precautionary uh, measures and procedures like masking, enhancing cleaning and the like. And the public, at least the public we deal with, really responded in different ways uh, to the limitations on their activities and, and, uh, and um, how they wanted to do things. For some, uh, 
they adopted, uh, they started to walk more, bike more, or hike more. And for others, they decided to tackle that home project, uh, maybe at the cottage or, or uh, uh, in a rural property. Uh, so uh, to us, an initial observation might be that uh, 2020 was the year of disruptions and a year where some things or a lot of things couldn't happen. But when we take a closer look at, at where we landed at the end of 2020, I'd say it was a year where we actually probably did more things in a, in, a, in a few areas than we would typically do while that was offset by a reduction in other areas. So on balance, I, I would say that 2020 was as busy as 2019 and 2018 and every year before that. There really was no break. And I think the difference was we were doing a lot of our stuff in really a compressed 2020. So, um, uh, so for us, I think the themes for 2020 was a theme of adaptation and resiliency. We adapted by offering more services online. Our customers can now reserve a campsite online. They can make a, an application for a Section 28 permit online. They can obtain a permit to hunt on our lands online. And they can view all kinds of educational and resource information online. Uh, we made greater use of our websites and, and our social media platforms to communicate information about the changes, how to get services, how to minimize the impacts of service disruptions and the like. And we also put resources online to help, uh, help young people learn at home. We saw an increase in the number of people using our conservation areas. And what was really encouraging is that many people sent us messages thanking us for helping them with their mental health by providing the places and spaces to get out of doors. We hosted more campers in 2020 than in 2019. In fact, we hosted 7% more campers this past year. And if you think about that, that was in a 16 week camping season versus our normal 23 week camping season. We responded to a year over year increase in the number of planning and permit inquiries in a, and, uh, and permit applications. Uh, and again, we primarily received those through a nine month period. So more than we did the previous year, but in a compressed time frame. We even in the middle of all of that got a new gatehouse built at the Warsaw Caves Conservation Area. We responded to more uh, inquiries for advice on stewardship and land restoration projects. Again, people trying to get out and doing something on their land while they had the time. We sold almost 8,500 tree seedlings in the spring 89 different landowners. And this fall, we planted over 6,000 trees on various properties. We continue to focus on keeping people and properties safe. We issued 23 flood related messages and responded to drought conditions. We continue to support our municipalities in the delivery of the Clean Water Act by providing the risk management function and the education programs associated with drinking water source protection. I'm proud to say that our staff came together to help each other get through the year. They jumped in to fill a gap, they assisted with tasks, they supported their colleagues, they went the extra mile to address customer concerns. Individually and collectively, they demonstrated the resiliency needed to get us all through the year. I want to thank them for all they did this past year and for what they did to help each other. It's really a privilege to work with this fine group of men and women. And finally, I'd like to thank the board for your support. Your direction and leadership, leadership provided us with clarity on the path forward and your support encouraged us to keep on going. So thank you. Andy, I'd like to turn it back to you now. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, what we're going to do next is proceed to uh, our Environmental Excellence Awards. Uh, pr uh, presentations. And uh, this year we are providing uh, four awards uh, to uh, recognize actions that protect and pr uh, promote a healthy uh, watershed. Uh, we'll be profiling the work that's being undertaken by a number of people uh, on the ground and, uh, and, uh, and people who inspire others to become actively involved in our watershed health. And so uh, the first is our Individual Conservationist Award, and I'm going to ask uh, Councillor uh, Kim Zippel 
uh, to uh, present that award. And Kim, if you could just live it up your camera and your and your audio, that would be great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my pleasure this evening to present the Environmental Excellence Conservationist Award. This award recognizes an individual who demonstrates leadership and inspires others to understand and become engaged citizens within our natural environment. This year, we are pleased to present the award to Cameron Douglas. Cam has been an educator for over 20 years. He began his teaching on the north coast of British Columbia and since 2004 has taught within the Canadian World Studies Departments at high schools with the Kortha Pine Ridge District School Board. Cam is the founder and program director of the Youth Leadership and Sustainability Program, widely known, especially on social media, as YLS, an innovative new educational program that prepares secondary students for leadership roles in pursuing sustainability at the local and global levels. Cam cherishes his connection to the natural world and is deeply concerned about mounting threats to the planet and its inhabitants. Accordingly, CAM's teaching practice enables students to make links between their own lives and communities and larger global sustainability challenges. CAM has also impressed upon his students the importance of engaging with policymakers, teaching his students to think critically and to share those thoughts with local leaders and decision makers. Cam's approach helps his students to see themselves as agents of change, identifying problems and generating creative solutions to shape their own futures. In partnership with Autonomy Conservation, Cam has engaged his students in a variety of activities related to the environment and sustainability. His classes have participated in planting projects to naturalize the shorelines around several stormwater management ponds in the city of Peterborough. They have learned about water quality monitoring, stormwater management, and assisted in the completion of the restoration of a gravel pit by planting native trees. Since 2018, Cam and his students have planted over 3,000 native trees and shrubs in partnership with Autonomy Conservation. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, Cam has supported the activities of autonomy conservation and engaged his class in ex experiential learning opportunities with all the necessary PPE and COVID precautions in place. This level of engagement and opportunity has provided important learning and leadership opportunities for his students and has contributed to the enhancement of our watershed environment. Congratulations, Cam Douglas recipient of the Environmental Excellence Conservationist Award. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, thank you, Kim, for the, um, the recognition tonight and, uh, and of course to the, to the board who, who do these awards. Um, I just wanna say a couple of words about this because it, it actually matters a great deal to, uh, to me to be recognized by the Tonabee Conservation. Um, in the YLS program, uh, I have learned very quickly that um, things happen when you build partnerships. Um, and it is really the foundation of the program. We work with different people in the community, but I absolutely treasure the partnership we built with, with ORCA for a, a couple of reasons. Um, the educational value of working with Tonabee Conservation has been fantastic. And uh, Kim, you've already touched on some of these stormwater management, biodiversity, invasive species. We did some macro invertebrate analysis at Jackson Park um, in a couple of years ago. I've actually been working with ORCA for about 10 years now. I, that relationship goes back with Meredith and tree planting. Um, so the, the, the staff, uh, you know, Meredith, Marie Curtis, um, just jump out with opportunities that they can, that even like bird watching um, and invasive species. Um, and beyond that, the students, I think, especially as they're learning to be, um, you know, in conservation, they learn the strengths of partnerships when they see that you know, the different people that have to make these projects happen. Um, they also see as senior students, um, the, the career paths and, and, and Paul in particular, you know, sharing how he got to where he is and the, you know, the different paths you can take to college and university and so on. I think that's really important for senior students. And perhaps most importantly, as Kim, you touched on in the pandemic, they're just getting outside and stewarding with their hands has been absolutely critical. 
And we were lucky this year actually to do a Zoom with Dan a little while back on the very issues that, um, that David Crombie was talking about and the class was learning a little bit more about that act. And uh, we followed up with some advocacy work um, after that. So, and that was important for them to see how you advocate at a provincial level. And some of them made submissions to that uh, committee, provincial committee meeting. So um, looking forward to do some more, some more tree planting. It's my favorite next year. Um, and uh, again, thanks for um, recognizing this. And uh, you know, this work is easy when surrounded by so many strong um, conservation leaders in this region. Thank you very much, uh, Cam, and thank you, Kim, for making that presentation. Uh, we'll now move on to our second award, which is our Environmental Stewardship Award. And I'm going to ask uh, Joe Taylor, uh, Mayor of, as he likes to say, Awesome, uh, to make the, uh, the presentation. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Andy, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's certainly uh, a pleasure and a privilege for me on behalf of the Autonomy Conservation Authority to present the Environmental Stewardship Award. Uh, it seems a little weird to be doing it from the comfort of a small room in my house, but uh, how we present the award isn't nearly as important as why. The Environmental Excellence Stewardship Award recognizes a volunteer-based community group or nonprofit organization that has successfully undertaken projects and programs that contribute to a healthier watershed. The recipient of the award this year is the Peterborough Trail Builders Association, also known as the PTA, not to be confused with the Parent Teachers Association. Here to accept the award on behalf of the PTA is Chair Gordon Wilson. The Peterborough Trail Builders Association is a volunteer run membership based organization devoted to trail maintenance and development in the Peterborough area. The PTA have dedicated many hours from countless volunteers to enhance and maintain natural surface trails for non motorized uses in and around Peterborough and the surrounding area. A majority of their work is focused at Herald Town Conservation Area, which is in Austin Township, and the Ganaraska Forest. In 2018, the PTA and Autonomy Conservation formed an official partnership to maintain and develop the trails at Herald Town with the goal of maintaining and expanding the existing trail network. Since 2018, the PTA have facilitated the construction of several new trails, including Hot Breakfast, G. Williker, and The Face. Additionally, the PTA has completed improvements to numerous pre-existing trails at the site. Together, the PTA and Autonomy Conservation collaborate to ensure that each trail at Herald Town is carefully planned to be part of the larger trail network. The PTA organize and lead monthly volunteer trail building and maintenance sessions throughout the year, ensuring that the trails at Herald Town stay in optimal shape for various user types, including mountain bikers, trail runners, hikers, walkers, snowshoers, and nature enthusiasts. Autonomy Conservation and the PTA have also collaborated to host an annual Earth Day cleanup event at Herald Town, encouraging the trail community to be good environmental stewards of the Herald Town property. Please join me in congratulating the Peterborough Trail Builders Association and PTA Chair Gordon Wilson, this year's winner of the Environmental Excellence Environmental Stewardship Award. Congratulations, Gordon. Awesome, thanks so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, check it out. This is uh, one of my favorite views here uh, from the top of the uh, Herald Town uh, Conservation Area Drumlin, looking north there. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you. Uh, we're, we're quite honored. And uh, on, on behalf of uh, our sponsors, uh, uh, Wild Rock Outfitters, uh, Fontaine's uh, Source for Sports, and uh, Shimano Canada, uh, and of course, our, our membership. Uh, uh, I'd like to extend our, our gratitude to uh, Autonomy Conservation. They've been uh, wonderful to, to work with, and uh, we really appreciate the opportunity 
that the PTA has been given uh, to uh, play this uh, stewardship role uh, in our community. Uh, it's, a, it's a great honor. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you very much, Gord, and uh, congratulations. Uh, we'll then move on to our next award, which is our Conservation Partnership Award. And this will be presented by the uh, Mayor of Peterborough, Diane Terry. Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. So the Environmental Excellence Conservation Partnership Award is given to an individual municipal employee who has made significant positive contribution to furthering the objectives of autonomy conservation in one or more areas of the authority's operations. And tonight I'm very pleased to recognize Ian Boland, the Senior waters, Watershed Project Manager with the City of Peterborough. Uh, Ian came to autonomy conservation from the City of Corth Lakes in 2012. His path towards environmental excellence was evident when he started at autonomy conservation. I'm told that while much of his time at autonomy conservation was focused on technical review, his aptitude for project work and moving the yardstick forward was apparent. One thing that stood out was his vision around and commitment to improving the floodplain mapping information available in the watershed. His interest and aptitude for floodplain modeling was noted by his colleagues and he was recruited to several provincially funded projects to catalog the floodplain mapping held by conservation authorities across the province. Ian was instrumental in developing the Autonomy Conservation Board approved strategy for the acquisition and management of the floodplain mapping an implementation plan that provided the basis to aggressively seek funding for future mapping projects through the National Disaster Mitigation Program. He was also instrumental in the Byersville Creek floodplain mapping projects, uh, was a flood duty officer, and continues to be Autonomy Conservation's backup flood duty officer in case of an emergency situation during the pandemic. While Autonomy Conservation was sad to see Ian leave in 2017, the city of Peterborough knew that he would continue his good work with us and we're lucky to have him. In Ian's current role as the city's senior watershed project manager, he is spearheading the watershed plan and Harper Creek subwatershed study, two critical projects that will help inform how to implement policies and plans to better protect our water resource system now and into the future. Ian is also a key person uh, with helping the city's climate change adaptation projects particularly as it concerns to how to adapt to the risks from flooding, drought, and extreme heat due to a changing climate. He is also one of the leads on securing funding for innovative climate action projects, like piloting a smart rain barrel grid for lot level control of stormwater and a home energy uh, efficiency retrofit program envisioned to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the community through home heating. Ian is involved in many community initiatives related to water, stormwater, and watershed management, including the Sustainable Urban Neighborhoods Program, Advancing Sustainable Development Goals, and Stormwater uh, Pond Planting Projects. Ian continues to work collaboratively with Autonomy Conservation and share his expertise and knowledge with the watershed community. Ian makes everyone around him more effective through his quiet leadership, willingness to work with others, and his ability to learn quickly. The results of Ian's work is felt across our entire watershed. So please join me in congratulating Ian Boland, the winner of the Environmental Excellence Conservation Partnership Award. Thank you very much, Mayor Tarian. Um, that, was, that was really nice, thank you. Um, I just wanted to also say uh, thank you to everyone at ORCA, uh, board members and particularly staff for the award. It was quite a surprise um, and is very much appreciated. You know, I think with all the changes happening at uh, CAs and a lot of the unknowns, it's more important than ever that we, uh, that we also back the good work that's happening at ORCA and continue to work together on things like the watershed plan and climate adaptation mitigation actions, um, you know, and, and educational and stewardship programs as well. Um, we should all be grateful for the knowledge and expertise that is available at ORCA and with their staff. Um, I know I certainly am. A lot of my projects wouldn't happen without the help that I've received there. So I'm very appreciative of that, you know, whether it's a big project, small project. So I don't have a big speech or anything, but I just want to say uh, a thank you again, you know, and I've enjoyed the meeting so far. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Ian. Congratulations and thanks for everything that you do. Thank you. 
So we'll now get on to our uh, final award, and this is our business award, and it'll be presented by Deputy Mayor of Selwyn Township, Sher Sherry Fennis. Thank you, and good evening, everybody. The Environmental Excellence Award for Business recognizes a business that has made a significant contribution to autonomy conservation projects or programs, advancing our vision of a healthy watershed. This evening, we are so very pleased to present the Environmental Excellence Business Award to Wild Rock Outfitters. Accepting the award is business owner Scott Mirison. Are you there, Scott? There you are. <laughs> Wild Rock Outfitters is a small privately owned store for outdoor enthusiasts offering equipment, supplies, workshops and resources for community members to get out and play. They have been operating in the Peterborough community for over 25 years, offering cycling, paddling, mountain biking, Nordic skiing, snowshoeing and hiking all activities that you can participate in at our local conservation areas. And it has been so important for our mental health during this pandemic. Through their business, co-owner Scott Mearson and Kieran Andrews have strengthened our community by supporting organizations such as Autonomy Conservation. They work tirelessly to promote tourism in our region and have contributed to the authorities' programs in many ways. In 2019, Wild Rock provided a significant contribution towards the construction of Harold Town Conservation Area's newest trail known as the Face. The Face Trail has transformed the route down the steep side of the Drumlin, which is a key environmental feature on the property. Wild Rock regularly coordinates clinics and events at Harold Town Conservation Area, catering to the local mountain biking community and encouraging new riders to the sport. For several years, Wild Rock has also partnered with other local bike shops, bike manufacturers and local organizations, including Autonomy Conservation, to coordinate an annual International Trails Day celebration at Harold Town Conservation Area. On this day each year, Wild Rock Outfitters partners to offer bike demos so that attendees can not only test new bikes, but also give the sport a try, get out on the trails and out into nature. Scott and Kieran truly believe in using their business to strengthen the community. Wild Rock supports and promotes local tourism, environmental initiatives, the cycling community, and more. At Autonomy Conservation, we are grateful for their ongoing endeavors to build the community at Harold Town Conservation Area through cycling, trails, and a love of the outdoors. Please join me in thanking and congratulating Scott Mearson and Kieran Andrews for their Environmental Excellence Business Award for Wild Rock Outfitters. Thank you very much. It's a lovely plaque. It's got the beautiful front of a canoe uh, heading out onto the lake on a beautiful calm day. It's the perfect blue sky mirror day. Um, really appreciate uh, the recognition. Um, Kieran, myself and Jonathan, and the rest of the staff at Wild Rock, um, we could be doing many other things other than working in an outdoor store, but uh, the common thread through that runs throughout our 35 staff is that we try we love the outdoors, we love participating in it, and we try to spread the joy of the outdoors. Um, whether that is in a local conservation area or in someone's backyard, getting outside and playing is key to, to good health and fun and a long and, uh, and happy life. So it's great that we have conservation areas that enable we humans to go out and do that. Um, it gives us a place like the Harold Town Conservation Area in the last uh, 10 years has gone from a small closed off place that uh, some people would hop over a fence to use, uh, probably illegally at that point, to a wonderful area where families are out enjoying it, they're picnicking, people are walking dogs, uh, people are mountain biking, uh, it's used all seasons, all times a day, it's just a, a wonderful thing to see. 
um, as is, you know, uh, Warsaw Caves and so many other areas around that have been a source of joy for people in these uh, last 10 months. So hats off to the conservation areas for uh, making that happen uh, and allowing things like the Peterborough Trail Builders Association uh, to, to work with them and expand the uh, reach that you already have. It's, it's great. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the award. We appreciate it. Thank you, Scott, and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, we will now move on to the, uh, the next section of our agenda, uh, and that is our staff service awards. And I'm going to ask uh, Dan uh, to uh, chair this portion of the meeting. Thanks again, Andy and everyone. Um, every year at the annual meeting, we recognize employees that have achieved a milestone in their service uh, at the authority. Uh, this year, we're gonna recognize four individuals who collectively have worked for us for 35 years. Um, some of them actually worked for other conservation, conservation authorities before they joined us. So there's more than 35 years worth of service to the conservation authority community uh, here tonight. Um, but all four individuals are being recognized uh, this evening, uh, that were recognized this evening have displayed a passion for their work uh, and are recognized by their colleagues and our clients for their expertise and their strong customer service. So I'm first gonna call upon Don Allen, who has been with ORCA now for five years and came to us from the Lakehead Conservation Authority in Thunder Bay. Don holds the position of planning and development officer and prior to that, he was our regulations officer. Don is very much at the customer service interface with the public. Don grew up in rural Ontario and brings a very practical perspective in his dealings with our watershed residents. He has a, you know, put your head down and get her done kind of work ethic. And he brings a great sense of humor to our workplace. Don has been key in helping us move away from paper-based processes to digital processes. Uh, uh, permit applications are now can now be received and processed digitally, and this is in large measure to uh, the work Don has done. And uh, not only is that convenient for our, our customers, but it also saves them time. So Don, thank you for your contributions over the last five years. And I just, uh, uh, you know, I wish all of us, or ask all of us to join me in thanking, uh, thanking Don. There we go. There's Don. You got your award. It showed up today. That's right. It came just at the nick of time. Good. Thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody. And uh, here's looking for five more years. All right. Thanks. Our next uh, recipient is Gord Earl. I know Gord was in and out of the call here. I don't know if he's, he's with us again. But uh, Gord's been with us for 20 years, and he holds the position of water resources technologist. Gord is the lead for the flood forecasting and warning program and the low water response program. And in addition to that, he, uh, he coordinates our groundwater monitoring and is responsible for dam operations. Uh, the core objective of all these programs though is to protect people and property from natural hazards. And it really is an objective that Gord personally uh, has a commitment to. Gord is a strong communicator. You often see him in the local media describing high water conditions, or presenting information about low water conditions to, to groups like the local uh, low water response team. Uh, this past year, Gord was instrumental in developing a new interface uh, that's on our website that allows anyone to be able to look and see what lot water levels and precipitation uh, information uh, that we collect is now publicly available and, and they're able to see what's going on across the watershed. So it's really about taking information we have and making it open and more transparent to our public. Um, this past year also reminded us about Gord's concerns for others. Uh, in uh, 2020, last spring, on behalf of the authority, Gord coordinated a collection of uh, PPE equipment that was uh, then donated to the Peterborough Regional Health Center. And Gord, through the course of the spring and the summer, while we were moving back into operations and we're a bit shorthanded here and there. Gord was one of the first guys to jump forward to help out a colleague <clears throat> or work in a program area that he's not typically, he doesn't typically work in. So he was there for his colleagues and he was there to help us get things up and running and deal with uh, public safety issues along the way. 
So Gord, I hope you're here someplace, but I'd like to thank you for your 20 years of service. And, uh, and uh, on behalf of all of us, we thank you for that. Did you dial in Gord? Gord should be able to unmute now and he should be able to talk. Oh, it's the first time we've gotten Gord quiet. So we're going to move on, Gord. Thank you. The next employee is uh, Jesse James. Jesse's been with us for five years, but he came to us from the Corth Region Conservation Authority. And prior to that, he was at the Ganaraska. Uh, he came to us with actually 15 years of working experience in conservation authorities before he joined us. Uh, uh, upon Jesse's arrival, uh, he's undertaken many uh, modernization initiatives uh, in our conservation lands program. And most notably is the use of technologies that allow people wishing to camp at our campgrounds or hunt on our properties, be able to book a reservation or obtain, obtain a permit online. And through his work with volunteer groups in the not-for-profit sector, uh, some uh, in the uh, Peterborough Trails uh, Builders Group is one example. Uh, he's helped uh, us partner with a number of agencies and groups to help improve the recreational opportunities on our lands. There's Jesse. Um, Jesse's a strong team player. He works with his colleagues to help deliver tree planting programs and land restoration projects across our watershed. Uh, he brings that expertise from his previous jobs and brings it here as well. So Jesse, on behalf of all of us, thanks very much for your five years, which is piggybacked on your previous 15 years, but thank you very much for everything you do for us. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the five years and uh, looking forward to many more. Great. Uh, our next recipient this evening is Lori Maloney. Lori has been with the authority for five years and she holds uh, the position of administrative assistant in the plan review and permitting uh, group area. Lori is the gatekeeper really for the plan review and permitting services. She deals with the public, keeps the applications flowing, follows up with staff and customers. And in any given day, there's a wide range of problems that people seem to give to Lori and she finds a way to resolve them. But she does it in such a pleasant way that once it's resolved, you don't even know it was a problem to start with. Anyways, Lori's really quite perfect for the role she plays. She's friendly and cheerful. She's patient. She's responsive. She works hard to make our interactions uh, with the public the best that they can be. And she's also willing, again, to help uh, others. And uh, that's probably a theme through, through all the staff. They do their job well, but they're always willing to help others. And Lori's, Lori's no exception to that. So Lori, thank you for your, uh, your first five years with uh, Tonaby Conservation. Thank you, Dan. I'd like to show my nice photo, which is great. I can't believe how fast these past five years have gone. And I think that that's a reflection of the really meaningful work that we do and uh, all the outstanding staff that we have at Autonomy Conservation. I really want to thank Karen Halley and Kim Duke and Denise Landry for this past year, especially for going above and beyond and keeping our office together. And I'd also like to thank Dan and my boss, Jennifer, for their very deft and balanced leadership through the challenges that the past year has thrown at us. And I'm looking forward to many more years with Autonomy Conservation. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Lori. And, and thank you, Dan, for those uh, presentations, but I don't want you to go too far. Uh, there is one more uh, special presentation we're going to make tonight. Uh, we, there is a bit of a passage that's taking place. Uh, our Sherry Stennis, our uh, vice chair, has, uh, is going to be relinquishing that position. We're not letting her go. She's still on the board. Uh, but uh, she's been the, the, the vice chair for a number of years, and I've uh, asked Dan to, to make a presentation on behalf of all of us uh, to Sherry. So, uh, Dan, if you want to go ahead. Sure. I'm, I'm going to ask Sherry to turn on her video if she, she would. There you are. So Sherry uh, has been the vice chair of the board now for 11 years. She started in that role in, in 2009 
and she's decided to step aside this year. Um, from uh, from the staff's perspective, uh, my comments are from the staff's perspective and my perspective. I think Andy will say a few more words on behalf of the board. But for me, Sherry has been a very supportive vice chair. Uh, she's always willing and able and available uh, to step into chair a meeting, to attend and speak at an event on, on behalf of the board, uh, to come into the office at any time, really to sign documents that require signatures and to generally help out whenever and, 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 and whenever and wherever she was asked to help out. Uh, you know, Sherry's got a, a very observant, um, a keen set of eyes and ears, and she watches and listens to things that happen in her township, in the county and across our watershed. And what's been of real value to me is that she would always bring back information to help us uh, and advice on helping us deliver our programs and services better. She had the interests of the authority on her mind all the time. And um, she, uh, she helped us be better by simply telling us when we needed to hear something. So Sherry, on behalf of myself and the staff, we wanna thank you for uh, your service as our vice chair. We know you're still on the board and we're thankful for that, but just in your capacity as vice chair, I want to thank you very much for everything you've done for myself and for the staff. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dan. And I just want to, on behalf of the board, uh, Sherry, I'll extend our appreciation to you for everything that you've done as, as the vice chair. Uh, as Dan says, uh, you're a keen observer and uh, have always been there to fill in uh, when uh, the need was there. I can say from a personal perspective, uh, that through my period of time as, as chair, and, and Sherry's been the vice chair, the advice uh, that you've uh, provided and the sound counsel that you've provided has uh, been really appreciated. It's made a big difference. It's made my uh, role and job uh, that much easier. So on behalf of all of the board, we want to thank you for your service as the vice chair. We're really appreciative of the fact that you're still here and will still be uh, seeking your advice and input. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I think it's really important that we recognize uh, all of that contribution, all 11 years of that. So, uh, Sherry, I thought maybe we turn it over to you for a couple of minutes and uh, perhaps you would like to say some words. Okay, thank you very much. In, in this particular instance, I'm glad this is on Zoom. I think if we were in person, I would have been a puddle. So, it, this worked out well for me. <laughs> um, I have to say I've enjoyed every minute in my position as vice chair over the years and working with our great staff. As the province is changing the rules with regards to governance and board rules, I felt it timely to step aside to allow another board member to sit as vice chair. Just a reminder, as you've already said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still at the board table. I might be asking a few more questions because I won't be on the inside track as I have been before. And I wish uh, good luck to Ryan in your new duties. And just to let you know, I'm just a phone call away. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry. Um, and so uh, we are now going to move on towards the conclusion of the meeting. Uh, this is the part for those of you who are visiting us tonight who aren't usually at our meetings. You have to know how much my board appreciates when I indicate to them I'm about to make some comments, which I have to do. And so uh, they're all uh, just, if you could see their cameras, their eyes would be rolling. But I, I really do uh, think it appropriate for me to say a few things just before we adjourn the meeting. And let me say, first of all, that I want to thank all of my colleagues for uh, selecting me to be the chair of the authority once again. I appreciate uh, the support and I want to take a moment to, to recognize all of the hard work of, of each and every board member over the past year. As we all know, it has been a most unusual time and uh, all of you have worked hard uh, to help us fulfill our mission. As we move forward into 2021, I am committed to work hard to serve our residents, those seeking our services, our member municipalities, and our board, uh, uh, and the board in general. 
I'd also like to take a moment to, uh, to formally thank Dan and the members of his staff team. Uh, as we said, this year has been very difficult and the staff have been uh, really adept at turning on a dime. Uh, I remember when we were going right up knowing whether or not uh, Warsaw Caves was going to be able to operate because of the public health rules that were in place. We had very short notice and, and you know what? Uh, we got her done. And in terms of making sure that we could serve our clients who, who needed permits to work with our development community, all of our staff have found a way uh, to do it. Uh, I have a habit of, 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 of just going to Dan and, and saying, well, let's just make it happen. And tonight's an example of that. AGM, can't get together? No problem. We'll do it all online. Well, it's not as easy as it, it seems. And uh, folks have done a great job tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank Karen and, and Dan and Jennifer for all of their hard work in, in, in putting this together. Uh, we've had up to 80 uh, folks that have participated tonight. So to all of you for making this possible uh, to do, I want to tell you how much we very, very much appreciate that. I'd also like to recognize both the Environmental Award winners and the Long Service Award recipients. Uh, they uh, are well deserving of those honors and it's an important part, I think, of the authority that we both recognize what our community does uh, to pursue conservation and what our staff uh, uh, do. Uh, Dan has provided a, a pretty thorough recap of, uh, of this year's activities. I don't uh, uh, plan to, uh, to repeat uh, that, but what I do want to do is to touch uh, a little bit on, on some of the things that, uh, that David Crombie touched upon uh, in respect to the fundamental debate that has emerged in respect of the role of conservation authorities. In doing so, let me say that I don't have a great deal of, of patience uh, for ideologues that may come from the right or the left side of the spectrum. I don't accept that individual landowners have an unfettered right to use their land in a manner that places at risk people, property, or the environment. I also don't accept the proposition that all development is necessarily bad. Land use decisions need to balance environmental, economic, social, and local perspectives. Our mission is straightforward, to protect people, property, and the natural environment. It is not to, step the, it is not to stop development, but rather to ensure that development happens in the right way, in the appropriate place, and is consistent with the rules established by the province through the provincial policy statement and the growth plan. I believe that the most efficient way to do this is through local organizations like ORCA, governed by municipal politicians who best understand local conditions and are accountable to local residents. Conservation authorities have always been a work in progress. Ways of doing business have constantly changed new ideas introduced, revised funding models adopted, and governance structures amended. Through it all, the fundamental purpose of conservation authorities have remained constant. Local authorities ensuring the protection of people, property, and the natural environment. The passing of Schedule 6 and Bill 229 changes the role of conservation authorities in some fundamental ways. Through its passage, the government has given itself the powers to unilaterally to decide whether the provisions contained in the provincial policy statement in the growth plan and other land use plans strike the appropriate balance between development and protection. The extent and frequency the provincial government uses its new powers will determine the practical impact of Schedule 6 in our ability to provide that protection to people, property, and the environment. We, along with others in our community, will be monitoring the impacts of the new legislation and are committed to work with the government to ensure that development proceeds consistent with the principles of protection and pr preservation. Thank you. Good night. Stay safe, be well, and in all things, be kind. And so what I would like my colleagues to do on the board is to line up their screens for just a second so everybody can see everybody else. Here we go. We've got everybody there. So uh, colleagues, that completes the uh, that completes our agenda for tonight.
a thank you to everybody who attended. Thank you to all of my colleagues. And I will inter entertain a motion to adjourn. And, uh, Diane and uh, Joe, all those in favor? Hands? Hey, colleagues, have a, uh, have a good night. And uh, we'll see you at our next board meeting, which will occur in February. So thank you, everybody. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good evening. Good night.